Uh, Packers put it on him. Hand up. Thought the Cardinals would be better in this one. Really did. I thought this would be a pretty even match. Better than this. I think all things considered, I liked taking the Cardinals in the points. I'm going to be honest. I did. And they just didn't play well. And Green Bay really took it to them. Uh, so let's look, let's look at the Packers. Got to look at their top five first because they won the game. Save the Evan Williams. I mean, he is he is part of one of a bunch of slot slash safety defenders in this class. They're studs. We just talked about Tyke Smith, Andrew Phillips from the Giants, another one, Evan Williams here. I mean, we got good safety play. And and it was a uh, – Kalen Bulk's another one right off the top of my head, right? These guys that – we were told it was a down safety class, you know, like, oh, hey, the slot. Co- I like some of the slot versatility players, but I didn't know they'd be getting on the field playing like this early. Evan Williams, 93.3 overall grade in this one. Edge rusher Carl Brooks with a 93.0. Offensive tackle Zach Tom with an 88.1. Tight end Ben Sims with an 83.8. And edge rusher Rashawn Gary um, having a bounce back game, 81.7. I believe that is a season high there for him. Jordan Love, a 72.1 overall grade in this one. And then for Arizona side of things, defensive tackle Kyrie's Tonga with an 83.1 to top the list. Linebacker Julian Okwar with a 77.9. Tight end Trey McBride, 77.6. Cornerback Sterling Thomas with a 75.7. And then Naquan Jones, their defensive tackle, in at number five with a 74.9. Kyler Murray, a 59.2 in this game. Stat that told the story, Dalton. What do you got? So the weird part about this game, and and I think it's kind of weird, because the Packers two weeks ago had a game like this on the losing side against Minnesota, right, where they fell behind real early and they tried to scratch their way back and it didn't quite work. The Cardinals came into this week with the highest graded first quarter offense in the league. They were they were the best team in the first quarter. They were getting off to good starts. Um, they, they just they were high flying. They were running the ball. They had Kyler. They had Marvin Harrison. They had Michael Wilson work, working. Trey McBride. Everything was working. This game, their first 18 plays across four drives, they gained 34 yards and one first down. Hmm. Just didn't. It, it's. I mean, you you said you kind of said it right at the top. They just kind of didn't have it. They had one drive all day that had four minutes of time of possession. Uh, they they look. They they didn't get their first play that gained ten yards until there was three minutes left in the second quarter. They couldn't even get. They couldn't get chunk plays. They couldn't get first downs. It was just this entire first quarter. Meanwhile, I believe the Packers scored on their first four drives. I mean, it's the exact same thing that the Vikings did to the Packers two weeks ago right, in Lambeau. Right. And they must have just watched that and the Packers said, Well let's let's do that to somebody. And that's exactly what <laughs> happened. Honestly, it's like it, it's a good strategy to go ahead, what, twenty four to nothing that early. But it's good I, work if you can honestly, get it. Honestly, <laughs> the we know the Cardinals are better than this on offense. Right? We know we saw it for five weeks. In theory. I mean in theory, yeah, but like offensively, they don't usually have this type of trouble, especially in the beginning of games when they've been coming out hot. Right. 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 It's just a rough day at the office. I mean, I think every team has one or two games a year like this where it just, for some reason, doesn't happen. And this this was the Cardinals' turn. I mean, it just didn't. We know Kyler's better than this. Um, really sucks that Marvin Harrison Jr. got the got the concussion. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just, yeah, it just didn't just didn't click. Just the engine never got running. They tried to get James Conner going early, didn't happen. Tried to get Kyler going, didn't happen. The Packers sent some heat on him early. Just nothing. You just have one of those Sundays sometimes that it just wasn't. It just wasn't going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like there have been. Not that I want to be too harsh on a team. We're still in the first half of the season here. It's uh, offensive coordinator Drew Petzing. He's he's new as the play caller there, so I don't want to be too harsh on it. But it feels like there has been more of those, even in just spurts for the Cardinals, than I thought there were going to be. It feels like we've had the really high highs. What was the game that they absolutely demolished? I can't remember who the opponent was. The uh, Rams. Rams, yeah. yeah where I, I mean, Kyler had like a ninety-six point five PFF grade. I mean, he was just untouchable. And, and he himself can run kind of hot and cold too. That's they're, right, they're, right. They're, they're better. They look better as an offense when they have balance. And, and it, that was the one thing that was clear is they've been using all these tight ends and twelve and thirteen personnel all year. They could not get James Conner going in the first quarter at all, and then the rest of the offense just went in kind of a chain reaction after that, just didn't get started. Yeah, I, I also look at, obviously the Cardinals' offense was disappointing in this game. You know, it's a long-term fix, because kind of like you said, they've got the piece on offense. Like, they have the ability to play well every single week, so it was kind of just like, hey, it just it, it was not their day when it came to the offensive side of things. I'm more worried about the defensive side of things long-term, specifically up front, because... Their lack of backfield success, I, I think, was a, a truly a stat that told the story in this one. They had 14 blitzes in this game, and yet on those blitzes, just a 7.1 
pass rush win percentage and zero sacks. I mean, if you're blitzing, it's got to be a lot more successful than that. You got to be able to get home and you got to be able to win as a team a lot better than 7.1%. That guy, that number's got to be 30s, 40s, something like that. I mean, we're not even close here. So if you look at their overall pass rush reps, 36 pass rush reps, 15 total pressures. All right, not bad. Zero sacks. I mean, you got to be able to convert those pressures. You've got to be able to get there. Now, obviously, we're, you know, we're an outlet and, and I, I would agree with this. Pressures are more important. They are more regular. You can depend on them, and they still disrupt the offense without having to get the player on the ground with a sack. There's no doubt about it. If you get the player on the ground, the play is over, right? And so if you get a pressure, obviously you're still in allowing quarterbacks to make plays, especially the good ones like we have seen Jordan Love be a lot over the last year and a half. 16 pass rush reps where the ball was thrown after 2.5 seconds, Dalton. Zero sacks. I just, it, it, you've got to be able to get after quarterback better. And you've got to be able to finish plays in the backfield better than what the Arizona Cardinals certainly did against the Green Bay Packers. Anytime you're giving Jordan Love that kind of an opportunity, he's going to make you pay because that's the kind of quarterback he is. Most impressive for you in this uh, game. Real, real quick on that point, too. I think what needs to be noted sometimes is, especially the pass rush win rate, I thought was the best stat in that graphic there. And, and I think what the, the amount of pressure can be a thing, right? Just how often do we get there? But I think it needs to be said that the quality of the pressure matters too, right? That's how guys earn those higher pass rush grades by winning quicker, mm-hmm. right? So if you're, you know, if you have quarterbacks with long time to throws, and Jordan Love sometimes holds the ball and waits on it, right? He wants to throw vertically. If you're not getting there quickly, you can get all your pressure. But if all your pressures are coming at three, 3.2 seconds, that's still taking too long. So it's like, it's a thing of like, okay, your pressure percentage might be high, but why are the grades so low? Because you're not actually getting there as fast as you should. Now you're getting there. You know, we talk about sometimes, oh, the the pass rush wins before or when, you know, a quarterback gets, gets rid of the ball too quickly, but we still give you the win. Kind of works the other way around a little bit where it's like, okay, you got pressure, but it took you three and a half seconds. You're just, you're just kind of at the behest now of – is the quarterback going to hold the ball longer than he should? So I think you're right. The quality of the pressures and the low pass rush win rate is a big thing right now for the Cardinals. Uh, Most impressive, I'm going in the trenches on the other side. Look, Zach Tom is one of the best offensive linemen in football. The only only right tackle right now graded higher than him is Penny Sewell. He's the second best right tackle in football. I I think he's like the quietest elite offensive lineman we have in the game. 88.1 overall grade. That's his third game this year with a grade at least that high. And mm. an 87.9 pa- uh, run blocking grade. He is spectacular, especially in Matt LaFleur's zone schemes and that. Seven positively graded run blocks in this game. I mean, he was he's just mauling people. He is one of, I know they had talked about before the season, do we move him to center? Some people think it'd be a Hall of Fame center. This I wouldn't move him an inch. Well, Absolutely. Well, cl- well clearly not now. <laughs> Absolutely not. He's already got three games out of six with an overall grade at 88 or higher. That's that's insane. He's the second best right tackle in football right now. And he's there, he, so far, you could argue he's been their most consistent offensive player between him and between him and Jaden Reed through the first six games. Zach Tom. Jaden Reed's been awesome. I think it needs to start to be said. Look, uh, here's the other thing, pass protection too, not just run blocking. 38 pass blocking reps. He lost one of them all day. No official pressures, one pass rush loss. I mean, he's, he is straight up one of the best offensive linemen in football. Zach Tom's name needs to get into the, like, Pro Bowl, All-Pro, PFF, all-whatever list because he, he's straight up. He's just a spectacular football player. You work at PFF. I, you I, can make that happen. I, I don't make the list. Should, unless they're you asking, could. I could. Maybe i got to ask to make the list. Yeah. i got to Com- talk to some people. Commandeer the list. Take it over. Second team. By force. Second team right tackle right now would be Zach Tom. No question. I love the claim. That's I love the shout out. I really do. I'm going to stick with the Packers for my most impressive. Evan Williams, their safety. We saw him number one on that list of the highest graded player that we had here. Fourth round pick out of Oregon over the last three weeks specifically. He has the highest coverage grade of any safety in the NFL at a 91.6. He had a forced fumble in this one, two forced incompletions, an interception. Uh, he had well, he had the interception in week two, I should say. Uh, and so, like, he's just been all over the field for them. He's been a welcome addition. We're all talking about Xavier McKinney, and th- this is a little bit of a joke, but my most disappointing is Xavier McKinney because he didn't get an interception in this one. No, right? Another safety took his spotlight. That's just that's wrong. It oh, that's, feels wrong. I didn't even think about that. Good You're week, right. Good weekend. You mentioned Oregon Ducks. Is good, Evan, good weekend for the Oregon Ducks. Too. Is Evan, Evan Williams, Williams a team player? You know. He could have had Xavier McKinney. Could have tied the – would that have tied the record? No, because the record is – I think it's eight. 
interceptions in a row. That's ridiculous. He was a player. I cannot remember his name. Maybe Walt. Walt's still in the chat because I think it was when I looked it up, it was somebody on the Raiders in the 60s had over the span of two seasons, it was like one going into the other, had eight in a row where he had eight, eight interceptions um, consecutively. And then the most single game ones, I think it is six, but Trayvon Diggs had technically had seven because he had two interceptions in one of those games, but it was like six in a row. So Xavier McKinney could have tied it right there. Anyways, I just went off a, a rant. That was uh, so I, I jokingly had Xavier McKinney as my most disappointing, just because we kind of already touched about what's disappointing with the Cardinals. So rough, I was going to have a little game, bit of fun there. But man, Evan Williams, uh, one of the highest graded rookies that we have all season long. So the Packers are playing extremely well. I, I'm going to shout out the people in the chat who are talking about the NFC North, dude. The Packers are four and two, and they're last in the NFC North. Uh, this is an unbelievable division. And if there was ever a year where four teams from a division make the playoffs have you seen the other stat on this what these four teams are the top four teams in point differential right now nuts that, that's just it nuts makes, it makes no sense get all four of them in the playoffs yeah well get- and the weird part actually and i'll say this for this the scheduling i know it's like this for the bears i'm not sure about the rest of them all of these nfc north division games are all like week 12 or later they just backloaded all of them for some reason like the bears it's like six of their last seven games are their division games or something like that. It's just mm-hmm. weird how, but they're going outside the division and they're all dominating. And now we're going to see, uh, who knows what we're going to see. Is it going to be four teams with double digit wins? That's insane. I don't, I don't even. <laughs> that know would if, be. Crazy. I don't even know if mathematically that can happen. I don't know either. Uh, it, it's just nuts. Most disappointing for you? Who you um, I kind of honestly, both teams for me didn't get any pass rush in this game. Okay, and so, I know, yeah, and, Cardinals, and I know, I know right. the, the the Cardinals obviously the Packers not much either. Only pressured Kyler Murray eight out of twenty eight. Uh, dropbacks, no sacks, one hit on him. Rashawn Gary was the only player in the entire game with a 15% pass rush win rate. So uh, not a great day for either defensive line necessarily in the pass rush, but uh, the Packers are feeling better about it with a three-touchdown win for sure. I just looked this up to check, and you you are correct. All four of these teams are the, the highest four-point differential in the NFL. They're going to change the playoff structure if this keeps – no, I'm kidding, but – <laughs> I mean, that's just. I think. I think actually, on some tiebreaker, one of them is out of the playoffs for the moment. So it's just it's the NFC North against the world. It's crazy. Wild. All of a sudden, it's the best division of football. Wild, love to see it.